Um, I just came in and I was just like, I'm going to do what I know and I'm not going to panic. Like, you know, there are people in interviews that start writing on the whiteboard. And then, like, if you don't know it, you don't know it. You're not, you're like, you don't know exactly what they're going to ask you. So don't waste your time, like, you know, confusing yourself. My name is Disoya Lale and I go by Disoya. A little bit about myself, I am a software engineer. I work at a tech company uh, here in Seattle, Washington. So I work for a team at Microsoft called Testbase at the startup. Um, I, outside of work, I code as well. Um, I'm an event organizer. Uh, I love hanging out with friends. And most importantly, I love traveling and taking vacation. Yeah. Minnesota Lindor. <laughs> It's my undergrad at Fravier and then university in Houston, Texas. And then I went out with the grad at North Carolina and T State. In undergrad, I did just computer science. And then in grad school, I did software engineering and then software security engineer. Yeah, so I was fortunate enough to start my insertion process uh, straight out of high school. So freshman year, I worked with a local company to help them with like their shipping system and try to... The code I created was like using like file system on the local system, but it wasn't it, it's crazy. Um, but then... Uh, freshman year of college, I started with my internship at Intel, and then ever since then I did a uh, sophomore, junior, and a senior year at Intel, and then that's where I came over to Microsoft for an internship. We did some coding work, so it wasn't just getting coffee and things like that. So we actually had meaningful experience that I was able to go back the next year and just keep doing the same thing, and then uh, other companies were able to interview me and see the value added from those internships as well. Work at Microsoft, it started at a hackathon at Texas A&M University. So from Prairie View, we would host hackathons uh, as a part of the computer science department there. Uh, ACM, which I served as a vice president at the time. And so we would host hackathons and invite other colleges. And so Texas A&M, which was about 50 minutes away from my school, invited us over for a hackathon. And um, there was a recruiter there, I don't remember her name, but she just saw what our team was doing and she just loved it. Uh, we didn't actually finish the problem, but she just loved the way we were interacting with each other socially and also like coming up with uh, the problems and solutions to the questions as well. Um, so she invited me over to Microsoft for an interview uh, that next year. I came, uh, it was about 10 of us. It was a little intimidating because it was 10 people in the interview. Um, and these are probably the hardest questions I've ever been asked in my life. Uh, but in all transparency, nobody got that internship from that group of people. So fast forward to grad school, uh, Keisha, I think she's in Atlanta now, she reached out to me, she said, out Keisha, uh, and she said they're doing another round of interviews if I wanted to come out. And so I came out, did my interview. Um, it was probably the most relaxed interview as far as like, not the interview itself, but as far as like my state of mind. Um, I just came in and I was just like, I'm gonna do what I know and I'm not gonna panic. Like, you know, there are people in interviews that start writing on whiteboard and then like, if you don't know it, you don't know it. You're not, you're like, you don't know exactly what they're going to ask you. So don't waste your time, like, you know, confusing yourself. Luckily enough, after five interviews that day, all coding, uh, they gave me a call back uh, before we all left the building. And they said they wanted to offer me the internship. Uh, currently, I'm a part of Microsoft Test Space. Uh, it's an Azure offering. I joined this team with recommendations from my mentor because uh, he knows I wanted to do a startup work, but I didn't necessarily want to leave the company because uh, I like the support and the benefit of the company. So uh, so they put me up on this team we interviewed and was able to get it. And what the team does is, I've been on a team for about two years, but we um, allow our developers to test their applications um, on our software, basically. So we test uh, their application on pre-release version of Windows before it comes out and provide meaningful feedback and analytics on that. Um, so it's helped with the catch bugs and the security things and also helps Windows as the services up due to their reliability. And we also test against things like apps, like Office apps, and Microsoft old apps um, before they come out so you can have that um, information about your application. I love my job. I love my team. Um, I love the leaders as far as I know them. Um, but yeah, I love it. It's, it's a great team because we, we have a startup vibe, but we're also backed by Microsoft. So we are able to have our own different cultures within us and also have that grace of having Microsoft culture to back us up as well. Still. And the money is straight. That's still. <laughs> so OE LLC started um, as a company to put my apps out under uh, my personal apps. I love creating apps on my free time as well. And so I just, I literally create apps to solve my life problem. 
uh, one of which was during college was uh, we'd always go to parties and, uh, you know, just how do you get the party started? And so I was like, okay, instead of me just blurting out random things and just put it on the app, um, add some ads to it, just test that piece of it because I've never worked with ads and all that. So it's, in some way I was learning as well as trying to put out a product. Um, so I ended up putting that out, I think, 2019. Um, and yeah, we get some feedback from that. And it's just kind of put me in the world of having an app on the app store, monitoring it, looking at ads, looking at revenue, and those analytics, right? We've done those for like companies and stuff, but to be able to do that yourself, like monthly activities and things like that, it just excites me to be able to pull what I've learned and like apply it to myself. Yeah, especially seeing an app on the app store with your name on it. With your name on it, it's beautiful. And it's like, I did that, right? And then it's like passive income, so now like the ads are generating revenue. Yeah. And it's just even more than the money, it's just the experience. It's the experience. Being able to take something I've learned from either work or just life and apply that, this is gold, was golden. That's and, uh, hopefully the part two of the app comes out before Christmas. Hey, that's, dope. <laughs> that's dope. So I have a lot of apps that I want to build, but the future of Oya LLC is not going to need me producing this app. So right? it's going to be me hiring and outsourcing those work to other people. Because what I learned from the first one, it doesn't scale to that. <laughs> I, I, I totally feel that. I, <laughs> I spent all of Christmas building one and I didn't know what to do. And, exactly. and once you feel it's now maintaining it, especially if you're taking it the money, you have to maintain it. You have to provide the desk quality. Right? And then release updates. And yeah, like yeah. That, yeah. Curated vibes. Um, curated vibes is, the answer would probably be similar to the OALLC, right? Um, seeing something that, seeing a, not a necessarily a problem, but see where you can um, offer impact in something, right? And so uh, moving to Seattle about five years ago, um, nightlife wasn't as good as it is now, even though some people would say it's not that good now, but it wasn't as good as it is now. We were mostly on the house party and then just doing things local. I think venues weren't really giving us spaces to kind of come together and, you know, do it like that. So uh, we'll do it at the house. So during my internship, me and my roommate, we had a whole house to ourselves, so we would always have people over. We always just want to bring people together and we just kind of share that. And so we'll have other interns come over and we'll talk about, you know, some interns had stressful work days, some people, especially when it was time to get return offers, like, you know, people were stressed. So we had people at the house who were just kind of fucking through it and all that. And so that just kind of started um, itself throughout my internship. And then I came back and I just continued to host people at my house. And so it eventually became bigger than my house. Uh, and people were upset that they weren't invited. It just became this thing. And I was like, okay, caught up one of my friends one day and uh, Amy. This uh, board of advisors and creative vibes and a good partner, creative vibes as well. And I was like, Amy, uh, what if we just did this? I've looked at a couple of venues. I think it's possible. Let's just get people together and uh, let's let's just see if it works. And uh, we were able to start at an art gallery. Uh, the planning of that was fun. Like you know, doing work that you enjoy is there's so much joy that comes from it, right? So planning of that was great. We we're able to get an art gallery, get some food, get drinks. Everything was like hired right this wasn't a bar that had everything set up so putting all those pieces together was great and you know my family came and that was really great to see my family come and support as well and the community really supported us on that and we really um we were able to grow from i think even the first event was supposed to be 50 people they end up growing to 100 people so we had to change venues and then now on average uh we'll probably do about 300 at our bunch of, and so we thank god for that it helps me create um but yeah i love to have a good time and uh I'm from the South, and this type of other hospitality is if, if someone's new, invite them over, you know, and there's been this whole stigma about theater freeze, and it's like that doesn't really apply to us, but if someone is new to town, come to our game night, don't bring anything, just bring wherever you know, right, and then we we'll just need each other. And, yeah, that's the house. Started. So yeah, imposter syndrome, you know, type thing. Maybe to this day, we're able to sit in here and talking about tech and my life in tech is like, Am I the most qualified person to be talking about it? Which, you know, it's my life, so I am. But mm. it's not part of that imposter syndrome. Um, I remember freshman year just being uh, 18 years old, like going to an internship, they're paying you all this money and they're expecting you to deliver it. And you're like, I didn't go to any of these like Ivy League schools. And, you know, I don't know what I, you know, I don't know all these things. But um, I was able to have some great mentors and talk me through it. And this positive feedback also helped. Yeah. And I'm, um, you know, to this day, trying to get out of that imposter syndrome and all that. But um, yeah, this is probably the most challenge of that. I think luckily, again, great mentors, and I employ everybody to go out there and find a great mentor. doesn't have to be the head of this, the head of that, but just my mentor is someone that I know is well-connected as well, and just 
kind of lives life similar to me. Uh, and so he was able to give me some great advice, uh, not to stress out about working. It is a job, but you know, get around one out of it. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. All right. Biggest lesson for work for me is tied into the imposter syndrome thing. It's just kind of like you belong, right? It's like we go into this work and we look at principal engineers and all these things. And we just, you know, don't think we're great enough and we're just beating ourselves up every day. But it took time to get that. You ask those people, they might have been there for 15, 20 years, and it takes time, right? When they came in, they probably didn't know anything. Or they didn't know as much as they do now. But then they were able to learn on the job and build on that. So just like you belong, take your time, give yourself, give yourself time to learn. Give yourself that grace to learn, and you know you you come out on the other side better. Well, on the on the other side, on the other side, man, there's been a lot of. Out of all the people who have interviewed in tech, you have the most balance. I was actually made in both. Like even me, I don't have that balance. Like other than than in your stuff and maybe occasionally in it, it's like I'm usually more work, work, work. Mm -hmm. But it seems like you have that perfect balance where. It 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 seems that way. Uh, no, 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 it is. That way. It, is that it seems way. that way, but uh, it's it's. I think it's that balance between what they say, uh, sleep, party, and work. Right. It's like these three things. Like it's if and it was somebody told me that in school. I don't know who it was, but it was like usually you pick two out of these three. Mm -hmm. Right. And it doesn't have to be applied to the whole life. Right. It's like maybe a week you pick two other three and you kind of go with it. But um. It's it's draining. Sometimes it's draining, uh, but it's a balance. It's it's, uh, it's you do what you want. You know, make a explicit trade off there, and you know, um, I enjoy it. I enjoy traveling. I enjoy you know going out, and I also enjoy coding. Mm -hmm. So to me, I don't see work as like a job job, even though it is a job, and I don't necessarily always get the project that I want or like the fun projects, right? So it is a job in an instant, but like I enjoy it, and uh, it doesn't take away too much from me. And sometimes it does. Uh, but I think that transparency with your team, your manager, and your um, just the people you work with to let them know what else you have going on. And uh, so my manager understands that. He understands, like, we have that full transparency in a way uh, to where he knows what I do on the side a little bit. And uh, when I might need some time off or at lower capacity, we kind of work through that so that way it doesn't look like my um, performance has been intacted. Yeah. That's dope. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. That's it. Well, yeah. <laughs>